Good morning, guys. Uh, whew. First video after some big changes, or at least planned big changes for 2020 for myself personally. Uh, if you listen to the uh, Country Strong Survivor podcast, um, I let it be known that I'm going to take uh, 2020 and get back to doing some self-care for myself. Um, and I'll still be involved with Love Wins, but not so much as the forefront. And I'm just setting some clear boundaries for myself and as far as uh, what I'll be involved hands-on in, uh, still be involved with fundraising, still be involved with uh, making sure that the mission continues. But like I said, it went from being my vision to our vision to now I feel like it's the vision. And I'm pretty proud of that. It's been a lot of hard work, not only with myself, but the original founding board members, as well as the current board members and uh, new people as they get more and more involved. And uh, we roll out some of the programs that we talked about. Uh, but today's video, don't forget, uh, December 3rd is Giving, uh, Giving Tuesday, where they will match up to $7 million in donations via PayPal. Our PayPal is uh, Love Wins RT91, or you can go to our webpage, www.lovewinsofficial.org, and uh, that's a pretty excited. We actually just capped $6,300 for the third annual holiday drive. Uh, like I said, it was been put on my heart that we're going to sponsor 100 kids this year. We are up to 63. Uh, I wrote checks out to cover the full 100, uh, just having faith that the Country Strong community, as well as people who are learning about our mission, are going to step up. Uh, any amount, whether it's nickels, quarters, dimes, dollars, hundreds, thousands, it all goes out to these kids during the holiday seasons who may not even have a Christmas if it wasn't for what we do. And I was also reached out to by our local Boys and Girls Club here in East LA who's been around for a little over a year and a half, this particular center. Uh, they tried to do a holiday drive last year and unfortunately they didn't get have enough resources to uh, make it happen, so they canceled it. And uh, he heard about us through our local postmaster because when you're going out every couple of days sending out packages uh, yourself, you're, you, know, you get to know your postmaster and Joe told him about us and uh funny thing is he gave me his card and he's the board uh, i think he's the head of the board and i thought he was gonna donate um but he actually reached out to us to see if maybe we could help make it happen this year so uh, you know i told him we'd do the best we can it was placed on my heart that we're gonna give him a thousand dollars so we're gearing up to make that happen in the next seven to ten days so they can have a holiday drive for the kids ages 17 to 7. And the one thing about this particular uh, Boys and Girls Club, it's actually science and art orientated. So all their programs are based on science and art and helping the kids, uh, sorry, got to take care of something, helping the kids uh, f flourish in that area. So I thought that was pretty cool. You know, when I was growing up, we had a boys and girls club at my local junior high school and it was about sports, hanging out, trying to stay out of the gang lifestyle. And uh, it was a pretty cool experience, you know, and then I became too cool for school and chose a different path, but uh, you know, it made a difference for me. So if I can help these kids out and uh, especially after the interaction I had with the young man with the uh, Love Wins Operation Blanket Drop and just renewed my hope for this generation that's up and coming behind us, um, I can't go wrong. So, now that I'm done with all the logistics, don't forget Giving Tuesday. If you can make a donation to the Love Wins uh, annual drive, dollar for dollar, up to seven million, they will donate. Last year, we were able to raise a thousand and some change, um, which means we got two thousand, which was kind of cool. Um, and if it's on your heart, you know, awesome. So what I did is I put some goals down and you can go to, if you got a, a five and below in your local area and they had this book, uh, I don't know if you can read that. Today I affirm a journal that nurtures self care. Um, it was five bucks, I believe. Uh, five below does not sponsor me. It's just, you know, somewhere where I take my kids. It doesn't cost me an arm and leg if they want something. And it's pretty cool. I'm going to be working through this journal. Um, and 
It's by Alexandra Alley, uh, Andrews McMill Publishing. Um, and it goes through, you know, self-care teaches me that I can pour into myself just as much as I pour into others. Now, that's pretty deep, especially for me. Um, and it starts off, you know, answer these questions daily or as needed. Spend more time with each one and be intentional with your answers you provide. Once you've completed your answer, head to the bottom of the page and write an affirmation that corresponds with your journal. Prompt answer. I've given you an example on the following pages just in case you need some inspiration to get started. So I'm going to start this probably fairly soon and I will do videos as I do it. If you want to journal along with me, that'd be pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I feel like I'm a good writer and I feel like this is a good start to this year of 2020 self-care. Uh, because, you know, I can try to save the world and help and change the world, but if I'm having medical issues and mental and spiritual and emotional issues because I keep pushing myself on the back burner, um, I'm not going to be good to anybody, especially my family, which is the whole reason this started. Um, so let's talk about the goals. You know, I forgot my notebook, so I got the napkin. And you know, I know the irony about these goals, right? I, I had 10 goals for 2020. And the way I wrote the goals down as I got to the last one was God, right? I did. I figured 10 were manageable goals, and I said God first, but yet it was last on my list. And it was just kind of an epiphany of like, well, you know, if God's supposed to be first, why is he 10th on your list? So as I looked at my list, if I actually put God first, which is number 10, and then went back, it actually got a whole new perspective so originally the list went 2020 goals i want to learn line dance i'm a huge country fan um i love the music i love what it represents i love the stories they tell i love how i don't have to worry about when i'm listening to any of the songs um that i have to worry about my kids hearing something that they shouldn't hear um and language that i deem inappropriate for my children I also realized that this is, you know, 2019, 2020 here shortly. I can't control everything in my children's lives, but I can damn near try to control what influences them. And I know country music is pure. It's uh, full of love, hope, and healing. And no matter how many times the guy loses the wife, the dog runs away, and the truck breaks down, he usually makes a comeback. <laughs> so um, first, uh, this is the original list. Um, it was line dance. I want to learn how to salsa dance with my wife, who is a spicy jalapeno. Uh, it's something that we've been trying to do for the last couple of years, and it, I'm going to make sure that it happens this year. Um, so you will be seeing me salsa and you will be seeing me learning how to line dance with the best of them. Um, I want to run my first marathon, and I'm going to do it in honor of my mom, so most likely it'll be a, con a cancer marathon. Um, uh, and my nanny, who both passed away to ovarian cancer, uh, I want to live healthy, meaning I'm going to watch what I eat, uh, emotional health, uh, spiritual health, and number five on the list, uh, mind you, this is the original way I, I wrote the list, was lose at least 50 pounds. I figure if I can lose half to a full pound a week, I'll be at 50 pounds, give or take, by the end of the year, and my ultimate goal will be 150, uh, which literally I will lose a person. Um, and I'm going to have little goals. Like once I get under, uh, I think three, no, 250 is the minimum to skydive tandem. And me and my son, uh, my Marine, he promised me that we would skydive once I got to that goal. So look forward to that video coming soon too. Uh, then it was buy a house. Uh, you know, I want to say two years ago for my wedding anniversary, I gave uh, producer Angie, who's my wife, uh, a key ring. And, you know, uh, things remembered, you know, trying to be romantic. And I said, uh, I believe it says something to the, the extent of I will keep this promise, which was I promised her I'd buy her a house. You know, she's been a godsend. She's been the mother of my kids. She's been my rock, my shelter, my motivator, my kick and butt when I needed it, uh, everything inclusive. And, you know, this last year through some serious trials and tribulations, you know, I feel like our relationship has gotten stronger. And the funny thing is, um, you know, October 1st happened and it changed everything. And it was probably one of the worst lights of my life. And it changed everything and how I looked at it. And it almost cost me my marriage, if I'm being honest, because I became so self-destructive emotionally. Um, 
but she held it tough. And then as I finally got to that other side that I always talk about that breakdown to a breakthrough, um, did I realize what true gift I had in, in my partner and my, my wife. So the, the house was a big deal. But notice, once again, it's towards the bottom of the list. So, you know, this is where the epitome, or, you know, I don't even know if that's the right word. The epiphany, I believe, is the right word, uh, where it just like, ding. Um, then it was number seven, the original way, was exercise at least five times a week. Figure out walk one day per, to prepare, walk, run, prepare for the marathon, car, uh, and um, strength build the next day. So, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and uh, Saturday do a light walk or something. That was the deal of it. Then it was eight, save 10% of my pay. So meaning have a savings account that I don't go into halfway between pay periods. So 10% of whatever I make, I want to put into a savings account and just sit there. So in case emergencies, uh, things happen, uh, to show my kids who already have bank accounts that we deposit in that it's not just about just having money on hand, but it's about saving for a future uh, if you want things and, you know, build your credit and all that good stuff. And then it was uh, nine. Now, mind you, this is the original straight, the original of this list. Ninth on the way this list was, which it was sad once I had a realization that more family time was number nine. Now, mind you, I told I set myself with 10. I wanted to do 10 goals for 2020 because I feel that it was manageable and it wasn't overwhelming and they wouldn't be, you know, these huge goals like I'm going to climb Mount Rushmore at the end of the year. These were things that I could take in baby steps and um, see tangible differences with little milestones along the way. And the number nine on my list was more family time. Then I'm thinking, okay, what's number 10? Uh, you know, get a promotion at work, uh, you know, buy or no not buy a new car i'm cool with my minivan but uh you know something i was trying to think and then i said you know what i need more time with god you know i need to build that relationship with god and then i'm looking at the list and i think oh, it was a pretty good list and then i said wait a minute i got this all ass backwards this was the exact same thinking i had before october 1st it was all about what i wanted self-seeking self-righteous and self-indulging if i'm being honest and then i said well if, if all things uh are possible through god then god shouldn't be number 10 on the list he should be number one and then when i said okay well i'm gonna start with god first then more time with god and then as i looked and i did the list and reversed it made me realize that i had all my priorities straight i just had them in the wrong order and i don't know how many of us get stuck in that type of thinking where we go from me, 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 me. But the reality is, yes, we are important in our own life. Self-care is important, taking care of ourselves. But what's your why? Why are you taking care of yourself? Well, I want to take care of myself, like I said on the podcast, because, you know, I feel like I've been put on a mission. Like my nanny used to say, there's two times in your life are two most important days. You know, the day you were born, the day you find out why. And I feel like the day I was born, December 23rd, uh, is a great day. And the day I found out why was October 3rd, 2017, which was to be a vessel to change the world through random acts of kindness and love, hope, and healing. And, and is it hard work? Hell yeah, it is. Is it learning how to balance your life? Hell yeah, it is. Is it about putting things in front and first in front of your wants and needs? Yeah, it is. And sometimes it's hard because, you know, you, you always want to, you know, that ego wants to to feed itself and sometimes you know i i saw this post and i sh uh, i shared it on my timeline um it was about self-care like what real self-care is and it was really heavy if you haven't checked it out uh it's a great illustration and it's pretty pretty deep you should uh matter of fact i'll put it in the uh the description below that way you can see it um and i think it's pretty cool but what I did was, after processing, when I had put God last on my list right after my family, which is totally, it, it kind of pisses me off because my family is the reason I do everything. Whether you see me out there grinding, doing multiple jobs, running multiple companies, learning how to do what I can at work and all that, I really am ultimately doing it so I can provide a better life for my family. But at the same time, I need to understand that in the priority of things, it's God my family and love wins were like, well, family's first, and then love wins is like literally milli, 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 milliseconds right behind it, and then the rest of the stuff will fall in line. Because if I take care of those first two things, um, well, you know, I need to rephrase that. It's God, family, 
me, I mean, family and me are probably like right here. And then Love Wins is like right below it. And then everything else will fall in place. And it took me, you know, like I said, I went to the, the ER uh, because I had a severe earache. I was losing balance and shortness of breath and all this good stuff. And, you know, the doctor didn't even look at my, my chart. She saw me and said, I'm giving you seven days off from work. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you need to rest. And, of course, like I said in the podcast, I didn't have that many days off. Or, well, I did, but I wasn't trying to burn them all up in one shot in case something happened in December. And that began, you know, the, the awakening of the spirit and the beginning to 2020 uh, being a year of change, of hope, of love and healing and self-care and allowing the team that God's put in my life to step into the, the, the spotlight and take it from my vision to our vision to the vision because there's a great team here at Love Wins that believes in everything we're doing wholeheartedly and we're going to streamline some of the processes, be, uh, be more of a juggernaut, be more vocal about what we're doing and be more part of the society that we were thrust into on October 1st and now have so many new members due to uh, senseless acts of stupidity um and uh you know we're, we're getting out there we're making connections we're building foundations and we're helping other people to achieve their dreams because you know it's an awesome feeling when you know you've been able to be a part of someone's mission and help them go to the next level and at the same time whether you realize it or not you're helping yourself so i'm pretty excited so like i said guys i'm going to be working out of this book uh, today, I affirm a journal that nurtures self-care by Alexandra Alley. Um, it's by Andrews McMill Publishing, uh, www.andrewandrewsmcmeel.com. Uh, I got it at five below for five bucks. If you guys want to work along with me, I'm making videos on it. Uh, I'd ask you guys if you can go ahead and do a, a 2020 list. Let's keep it to 10 goals and, uh, you know, tag me in it. Um, I will not, just like I said, uh, after December 8th, I believe I come back from Vegas, I will be off social media. My accounts will still be active and open. And I will keep Messenger for those of you who don't have my phone number. Um, and I can communicate through there, but I will not be checking the pages uh, directly because, you know, it became a crutch. I, I would get on and I would slip and be on for, you know, you know how it goes. So you go to, faith, go to the bathroom or wake up to go, you know, whatever. And next thing you know, you've been up for an hour reading your timeline. Um, at least that's how it happens to me. So I'm going to take a much needed break um, and I will be doing the videos and I will be doing, uh, I will be sharing them on, through, you know, the share uh, option, but I will not be on Facebook or Instagram uh, on my personal pages because I'm going to work on me. I deserve it. And I want to be a better person. I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better follower. I want to be a better brother, a better father, a better partner, a better friend. And uh, to do all that, i got to take care of myself. So, guys, thank you for watching the video. Uh, uh, a little longer than normal, but a little shorter than some of my long ones. So you guys have a great day. And if no one's told you Happy Thanksgiving, even though I'm a little late, Happy Thanksgiving. No one's told you they appreciate you. I appreciate you. And if no one's told you they love you, I love you right where you're at. And if no one's told you it's okay to feel what you're feeling and even go into a breakdown, as long as you don't make it your permanent home, I'm telling you, it's okay. But use that breakdown for a breakthrough. And I promise you, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how dark it gets, there is going to be a breakthrough for you. And when you get to that other side, you'll be able to look back because you're going to be the light for the person coming in behind you. I know that's not easy to hear right now if you're in the midst of something, but don't give up. And if you don't believe, believe that I believe until you believe and we can believe together for the next person who comes in. So you guys have a great day. And remember, a random act of kindness will change the world. And if you don't understand that and you don't believe it, I can tell you from living experience, one random act of kindness changed my world. Have a great day and God bless.